Hi guys and welcome back to tutorial time. So thank you so much for being here. It's awesome to see that there are new faces joining us. Um, I'm very flattered honestly that there are people here that want to use you know my skills, my knowledge to learn from um, and want to support me along the way. Really appreciate you so I want to start off by saying thank you for being here. Thank you for being a patron. Honestly would not be able to do this without you so I really mean it when I say thank you uh, for your pledges and for joining us here on Patreon. So for today, this was suggested by a patron. It's drawing something with either fluffy or curly fur. So I thought I'd start off with a curly fur, a curly fur, bleh, curly fur tutorial today. And perhaps do some other examples in future tutorials. But I thought curly fur is a really good idea and what I thought I would do is draw a breed of sheep called a Wensleydale sheep. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a breed of sheep that you find in the UK that has quite long curly fur. I thought that would make an excellent example to show you how to draw, how to draw curls in general really. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a start in a second. Um, so grab your pencil. I've just got this regular blue pencil. It's all you need. Nothing too fancy today. And we'll get started. Let's go. So I'm not going to be using a reference uh, this time for this tutorial. I did scour the internet before I um, made um, before I'm making a start, so I've got an idea of what these sheep look like. Um, so we're just going to kind of go with the flow, and you're more than welcome to join me along the process. Um, so we're going to start off by drawing a sheep, very loose um, sheep profile, because I thought that would be better to kind of um, kind of make an example of how the fur kind of curls and twists and coils. Um, but we're going to draw a sheep's face essentially. Um, so I like to start off with a circle. If you've joined me before, you can probably, you know, probably uh, recognise the fact that I tend to start with circles for animals, um, and draw a little small circle for where the muzzle will fall. Then at the side of the head, I'm just going to draw these kind of large oval shapes, and that'll be our ears. Nothing too fancy at the minute, just building up that framework before I go into the detail. Um, gonna gonna sort of place where the, the eyes are gonna be. Again, smaller circles, very light at this point in time. Circles either side of the head, um, towards the edges of that first kind of head circle that we placed. You can make sure these are level by doing a um, sort of horizontal line that cuts the circle in half if you want to. Um, and drawing a line down the middle to kind of represent the centre of the face as well. Entirely up to you if you find that useful. Um, I'm going to draw another sort of centre line around the front of the muzzle. You can see that it's slightly off from the main centre line and that's because the head is ever so slightly turned. It's not kind of front on directly, uh, but that's just the face that I'm drawing for this, uh, for this example. So I'm going to cut in where the nose is. I'm just going to stick in a V shape just at that sort of third way line on that lower lower uh, smaller circle and then I'm going to just draw another another line across another third way down or third way up from the bottom so from the bottom to place where the mouth will be and I'm going to connect up these here very lightly to place the kind of sides of the sheep's face. So with these uh, Wensleydale sheep, they are super curly. Um, I do encourage you to kind of look these guys up. I'll put the name somewhere so you know how to spell it. Um, but they have very curly, quite long fur. Um, I, I guess it's wool, isn't it? It's not quite fur. I don't know what the difference is, but wool um, is very curly, very long in the Wensleydale sheep. So I'm just going to kind of throw in nothing more than a few squiggles for now. I'm not going into too much detail, and I'm kind of drawing lots of little S shapes. I'll stretch that in here. I'm just going to sketch in roughly where the neckline is as well. And from the pictures that I saw before, a lot of these Wensleydale sheep have a lot of curls on the top of their head that again kind of cut into that face. They kind of obscure the face quite a bit. So I'm just going to do this, throw in some of these S shapes, 
just doing loose squiggles at the minute, nothing more than a squiggle shape. And I'll zoom in so that you can see these lines as well. So as you can see, all I'm doing for the time being are lots of kind of little squiggles, nothing more than that for the time being, and I'll kind of structure those up a little bit later on. So I'm just gonna use this opportunity to draw in the details. So I'm gonna give them nostrils, going to the edge of this V shape, I'm drawing sort of like a teardrop shape, to kind of expand where the nostrils are, maybe a little line up the top to emphasize where that nostril is. Do the reverse on the other side, like so. We'll shade this in later, I won't worry about it too much for now. Just kind of round that off like that. And draw down the central lip line. So using that center line I drew before. And kind of getting to the where the mouth is and rounding off those edges there to bring in that lip up to a sort of curved line, almost like a little smile. Like so. So he's not gonna be super realistic, he's gonna kind of be stylized, which yeah, it's part of the process as well, so feel free to do whatever kind of stylizing you want to do. There's no rights or wrong at all. Just drawing that chin as well. So again, lots of curvy shapes. Well, that chin shape. Bringing that mouth up here and that jaw like so. So I'm just going to draw in a little dome here to represent where that nose is. It's not perfect, I will kind of erase things as we go, maybe shade later as well. But just starting off and that kind of brings in the rounded top of the nose. And I go to the eye. So I've always placed, you know, a larger circle than is actually necessary. The eyes are quite small, really. So I'm going to use this opportunity to kind of cut in around about this point here. So it's the so the lower half, just on, the, so if this was a compass, you've got north, south, east and west. This would be kind of southwest. Bring in a little teardrop, tear duct line here. Bring it in here. And almost turn it into a smaller circle here for the actual eye. You use this opportunity to bring in some eyelids if you want. Just finish off that eye with some nice curvy lines like so. So if we did a sort of southwest starting point here, we'll go over here and do a southeast starting point to make a sort of opposite. Again, bring in that tear duct up to that sort of horizontal line we've already placed. And dome over the top to make the top of the eye. And referring back to the eye you've already drawn to make sure it's as even as possible. And again, draw in that eyelid as well with a little eyelash like so. So we'll keep that eye blank for now uh, and we'll draw in the eye sort of pupils and stuff later as we go. Cool so we're starting to come together you can kind of see these curly squiggly lines that will represent the curly fur um, and I'll, what I'll do is when we come down to the cheeks I'll add a bit of fluff into the side as well I'll show you how I go about doing that. Uh, for now we're just going to do the ears so they tend to be tucked away by this fur you can see. So I'm not going to put too much emphasis into the curly fur at the minute because we're going to shade it later. But considering this strand of fur, that, fur that, or strand of wool, I keep using the word fur, but I think it, it's kind of interchangeable. So I've already drawn this layer of wool that goes over the ear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this opportunity because I'm about to draw the ear in to refine the curl ever so slightly. So you can see just brought in that lower part here and I'm going to do the same for this little bit at the bottom. I'm only really going to draw squiggly lines. So where I've curved down here, I'm going to bring it in and follow that line back up. Making sure that I narrow, wide and narrow. As you can see it's a bit narrow here, wider here. Using that to help kind of define the curls. Do another one here, curl. Narrow, widen, narrow. 
and it just adds a little bit of depth and interest to those curls. Cool, so now I've done that, I'll draw in this, this ear. So the bit that connects to the head is a little bit flatter than the rest. So I've got the oval guideline, I'm just going to draw that as a slightly flatter line. It's not quite flat, you do can do a light, light curve as well. And the fold of the ear that comes up like so. And then where this lower line comes up, that's the bit that extends round to the top of the ear. Like so. There we go. Bringing that line in. You've got a nice organic curve up there. Get to the kind of rounded point of the ear. And bring in that lower line. Oh, you can see this original oval is much wider. I'm actually going to narrow that ear slightly and bring it in. Like so. Cool. I'm just going to do the same for the other ear. So I've got some curls here that fall in front of the ear. I'm just going to draw those in first. So again, narrow, wider, narrow, overlap. Squiggle, wider, narrow, wider, narrow. Just paying attention to how those kind of lines widen and narrow together to make that curl. So I'm going to have this other curl go up over the top of the ear. Squiggle, narrow, narrow, wide and narrow, like so. Bring in the top of that ear, bring in that fold, comes up like so. Continue that line round, do the top of the ear, bring it out slightly until I'm happy with it, get to the point, and bring in that lower part of the ear. Like so. Cool. So we're getting the main structure. Now it's kind of going on to doing the fur. So I'm just going to reassemble, maybe zoom in a little bit closer to you so you can see, um, and we'll get to playing with the curls. So it's time to carry on with the wool. What I'm going to do is for every little strand that I've kind of implied already, I'm just going to go in and add in some more of those squiggles and start defining that wool, kind of having a point of origin somewhere in the middle of the head. So most of the wool that I have will extend from that point and go in directions away from that kind of point of origin, making sure that as I go, I'm doing these squiggly lines, tapering from wide to narrow and kind of letting it flow as it goes. Doing some longer perhaps. Again, wide to narrow to wide. Bringing it back to roughly where I placed a, a general kind of point of origin around about here. So all of these strands will carry on from this point. Wide, narrow, wide. Some more curly than others. This one's quite loose. Wide, narrow, wide. Like so. Connecting up to that ear part. And then I'm going to extend them down. So we're gathering them in chunks. So if I've got here, perhaps a bit of parting that goes a little bit along here. Doing some longer strands as they come along the forehead. Perhaps rounding them off. Like so. Overlapping with a round bit on top. Carrying down. I'm just kind of letting it go with the flow. Perhaps doing a little coil in here, overlapping, so doing a loop here, carrying on down, extending it till it reaches that point, bringing in those curls that I've done before, making sure everything's very 
wavy. I'm not doing any straight lines. Nothing too extreme. And you can see how those curls kind of build up. So what I'm going to do while well, I've got this section of the face here, I'm going to bring in those cheeks. So the cheeks are quite fluffy as well. So I'm not going to do massively long squiggles, but you can see I'm drawing lots of C shapes, lots of S shapes. I'm bringing in those curls to the side of the face of this sheep. Bringing it down. And I'll do, perhaps I'll do the same on this side. I'll do the, I'll do the top curls first and I'll go down my forehead. So again with these long curls, wiggles, S shapes, taper in, out, make it wide and narrow. There's an overlap here. In, out, in, out. Filling these spaces up with curls and squiggles. I'll do a shorter one here that stands here. And then perhaps have some one that comes underneath. Like so. One over the top. Wavy. Wide, narrow. Wide, narrow. Wide, narrow. Just letting it go where it wants. Not being too picky, letting these curls kind of do their own thing. Just filling up that head, forehead, lots of waves. Like so. Again I've got to the cheek, so I'm going to do these S shapes. C shapes, V shapes as well, they make quite a nice floofy side thing, floofy shape. And fill in the chin here as well. Good. So I've got these curls in. I'm just going to fill out the rest. So I'll see you here shortly, but again, whilst I do the rest of the neck, again, just these wiggly lines, tapering in, tapering out. And I'll carry on with that, and I'll see you back here in a second. So one thing I've done here is I haven't done the directly next curl. Say so I've got a bit of space here, so I'm going to do. I'm going to throw in a curl just here. As you can see, I'm pressing kind of heavy in some places and lightly in others, and that makes this kind of interesting line pattern. And what I've done by not drawing every single curl in this section here, kind of made it a bit more like an illusion. And then what I can do is go in and fill in those gaps with some extra curls just for a bit of visual appeal. I'm going to draw one here. Pressing thin, pressing thickly, varying that line weight. Drawing lots of kind of Disorganized lines, nothing straight too much, just lots of wiggles, letting the kind of definition go as it pleases. And filling in these spaces with lots of squiggles. Cool. So now we got to this point, we've done the outline, all we need to do now is do some shading. So what I like to do is at the base of each strand, so right here we've got quite like a uh, a collection of ends of strands. 
Just going to start by layering up a couple at the time, adding in some light shadow. And this gives a bit of depth at the base of each of these kind of curl strands. You can kind of do this for all of them. You can leave some out. You can do some at the same time. You could do them individually, however suits you. Start off with some curls, some shadow, sorry, at the base of the curls. And then some of these, like for example, where it narrows, you can add a bit more shadow. And what this does, when you kind of go to the narrower parts, it suggests that the curls are kind of bunched together. And you can do add that at say the tips of the the hair. The parts where the curls have narrowed, you can add a little bit more shadow, and it kind of implies lighter area, darker area, and it sort of gives you a bit of um, a bit of highlight to the tops of the curls. And I filled that in with some extra extra lines there which creates that texture so again where it's narrow adding a bit more shadow where it's bold sort of bulging here left it light where it's narrow filled it in with shadow and connected it up with some lines like so and it looks like highlights then so i'll do another one here darker in the middle where it's narrow where it's wider it's kind of lighter darker at the narrower points lighter darker and then connecting that up, kind of going with the flow of the hair to add in a bit of extra texture. So I'm just going to go around for every strand, darker at the narrower points and lines like so. Darker where it's narrow, lines like so. And that's essentially how I'm going to go over the entirety of the head or sorry, all the curls. Darker, but where it's obviously fallen behind. Darker at the narrower points. Lighter where it's bulging and creating those highlights, like so. So I've not done any kind of specific uh, lighting source here. Just kind of doing very simple. Darker in the, the narrow bits, which is kind of where the recesses are. And then lighter where the hair bulges or opens up. Dark there lines to fill out those highlights just add a bit of texture and here dark at the back darker where it's narrow and kind of almost round off those sections as well so you can see that's quite a round section it just helps create that kind of bulbousness <laughs> dark light dark light dark fill in that section Dark at the base, dark at the narrow points here, wide is brighter, dark at the narrow, dark at the narrow, and fill in those sections with some extra strands. Dark at the narrow, slightly lighter in the uh, bulbous, bulbous bit, darker at the narrow, like so. And I'm just going to go around and do all of these sections. I'll see you back in a bit. point where the, most of the curls are all coloured in. I've gone from the darker sections to the lighter sections to create those sort of highlights and really emphasise those kind of curly areas. And I'm just going to go in and shadow the rest of them. So I'm going to go and bring in these lips, make them a bit darker, cross hatch like I love to do. 
and really just bring out those features to finish off this little sheet drawing. So pop in the pupils, bearing in mind that they've got the really kind of strange rectangular, rectangular pupils, which helps them see basically in 360 degrees. Sheep are prey animals, so naturally they want to keep safe and avoid their predators, and that's why they have the funny shaped pupils to help them see as much as they can. So I'm not going to go crazy and do lots of detail for this guy, but fill in those ears. Add a bit of texture. Shadow where the ear bulges slightly. But there you have it. Here we have our curly haired Wensleydale sheep. And I really hope you enjoyed that. I think that was really fun doing the kind of curly curly hair. I apologise that some of it dropped out whilst I was recording. Um, kind of a busy time at the minute behind the scenes. Um, so my tutorials may be lacking slightly, but I do appreciate your support. Um, yeah, sorry I might sound a little bit tired, uh, but I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, yeah, so this is the second one for this month. Oh no, it's the 1st of October. This one's coming out on the 1st of October, so this is a... Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, do let me know if you've got any further ideas for tutorials. I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know in the comments whether this was enjoyable, whether this is useful. I'd love to see what it is that you create, whether you also draw a curly-haired Wensleydale sheep, or if you do anything else, let me know. Um, and I'll see you again for the next tutorial. Bye guys.